starting in Revelation 3, verse 14. It says there, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. As the rocket gets ready on the launch pad, you hear the voice of the controller. And at the critical point, he says, We have ignition. We have ignition. As a church, we want to have ignition, to realise liftoff, to burn for God, like those rocket engines, as those jet engines are powered up. We want to be on fire for God, don't we? Mm -hmm. We want to be burning for God, to get fired up. That's the theme today, is to get fired up. Now this morning my wife inspired me. She, uh, uh, the, last, the last word she spoke to me was fed up. Not that she was fed up or anything, but, but are you fed up or fired up? Are you fed up or fired up? That was in my notes too, so she must have been reading it. Yeah. Uh, where has the fire gone? Where has the fire gone? The fervour. Are we like the Laodicean Christians? The Laodicean church? Are we going to be like that rocket on the launch pad, ready to launch out in God's will and God's power, that each one of us can be, as we ought to be, fired up, fired up for God, to be what God has called us to be, to get excited, to get energised and empowered and activated and mobilised. As Aussies, we can succumb to the culture of our world, of our culture, can't we? Of our community. A culture, sometimes Aussie culture, let's face it, it's a culture of apathy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of apathy, of complacency. Someone once was asked, what's the difference between ignorance and complacency? And he responded, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Ignorance and complacency, I don't know and I don't care. Apathetic. It's about time that we did start to know and to care about the things of God. To know them. To search the scriptures. To love the word of God. To love our saviour. To love his truth. To love the brethren. To know and to care about the things of God. The things that really count at the end of the day. At the end of our life. It's about time we got fired up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you agree to that? Amen. Some Christians today, they're stifled, they're stagnant, they're sterile. Where has the fire gone? It's, it's kind of a bit like the candle. It's kind of blown out. It might be smouldering a bit. Maybe just uh, fizzling out. And, you know, we can all have times like that. We're not always on, on, the, on the cutting edge, on the, on the uh, firing line, are we, like we should be. But we must, brothers and sisters... And in the Old Testament, the uh, folk had, at that time, the idolaters had what they called teraphim, or the household gods. And maybe it's true for us that we've got household gods. <coughs> maybe you're spending more time with that one-eyed household god named TV than with the Lord. Yes. We can all question that, can't we? What are we putting our time and energies into? We can have problems with the ignition. With the ignition. I know Brother Joshua, with his bus there, has some trouble with the ignition sometimes, don't you, Joshua? That, that, that this, uh, the battery uh, has lost a bit of its uh, oomph, or uh, maybe it's just the connections or whatnot. But there's problems with the ignition. And people today, there's problems with the ignition in the church of God at times. There's problems in our lives, there's problems in our spiritual walk, and we will have to answer to God for our life. Have you got trouble with your ignition today? With your ignition. Now, of course, we've all got different capacities. Not everyone's capable of the same things. I know there's some that were telling me of great ministries in the past that they've had, and how the Lord's used them, and maybe there's not so much capacity for some of that that they have done before as we age. Of course, there's limitations that we all have. As we that are younger too, we all have our limitations, whether our abilities or our physical capacities. And I know our dear organist here is 
has got sore fingers. Mm. We need another organist because my wife has uh, got some arthritis in her fingers and it's making it painful for mm. her to play the organ. Brothers and sisters, we need to pray that the Lord will help us in that regard. Yeah. Are you fired up or fed up? Let's not get fed up. Let's get fired up. Now is the time more than ever it has been. More than ever in the world's history, more than ever, it has never been a better time and a more needful time for every one of you and I to refire. So not to retire, but to refire, to reignite, to refresh that fire. And think of some areas that you can get the ignition happening again, that you can get fired up again about the things of God. For example, 1 Timothy 4. Paul talks to young Timothy, and you might want to flick there just to in part of the verse 1 Timothy 4, verse 14. Paul writes to Timothy in part there in the verse, Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. And likewise, 2 Timothy 1 6, he says, 2 Timothy 1 6, in part of the verse there, Paul exhorts Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Get fired up about your gift. Get fired up about your gift. Now we've got these little leaflets here we hand out to folk. Can't fill one out, fill one out. Some people are so keen to fill two of them out. It says your, you and your church, how do you want to use your gifts and abilities? There's people here who've got gifts that they're not using yet. I, I can be guilty of that. We all can. Fill this out, well then we'll know what you'd like to do, what you feel God's made you capable of doing, so then you can get on and do it. Amen? Neglect not the gift of God that is in thee. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee. It's that which God has given you to do, suffering because of neglect. There's an inspiring scripture in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18. By much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of hands the house droppeth through. Now I know there's some, some people here, there's, there's some very talented carpenters in our midst. We've got a lovely veranda on the front of their house <coughs> that they built themselves. He's not paying attention to me. But, you know, some people have got beautiful uh, constructions of their home, and they look after their home, they build it, they... they uh, Extend it, they make it look glorious and marvellous. And yet the sun, the, the house is falling down because of the idleness, because of slothfulness. The roof's falling down. You know, we've all got to watch our roof, especially this roof, it leaks all the time. It's a constant job plugging the holes to keep it from falling down. But brothers and sisters, the building decays because of slothfulness and the roof falls down and the, and the, the roof leaks basically because of idleness of hands. And it's like that too with our spiritual lives, isn't it? Brother, sister, are you guilty of, of slothfulness, of idleness of hands? Fan into flame is the sense of this here. 2 Timothy 1.6, stir up the gift of God which is in thee. It's got the sense of fan it into flame. You know, get those bellows out and put some wind into that, those, those little embers that are just fizzling out and dying into those ashes that have just got a little bit of red left in them, get the bellows out, fan it into flame, that gift of God that you've got in you, that ability, that talent, that calling that God has given to you, get stirred up about it. Get stirred up about it. Stir up the gift, Paul says. Get fired up about the gift, that gift, that calling, that ministry, with all the different capacities. Will it be faithful to the Lord as honouring unto him to stand firm, as God's servant, not as a man pleaser, when you use your gift, you might upset some people. I can be guilty of that, and it's a good thing when I'm guilty of that, if I'm pleasing God by what I say, and not pleasing man. And there might be some folk leave the church because of what I say, because it's the truth. There's time to speak the truth, and that is this is the time. There's never a time not to speak the truth, really, is there? As Galatians 1.10, Paul put it, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. In a way, if our church is pleasing men too much, if I'm as the preacher or whoever's preaching pleases men too much, then we're failing God. We don't want to do that, brother and sister. We need to be faithful to God's calling 
and to his will, to his honour, that everything that we do as a church is glorifying unto him, that he is pleased with what we say and do in any ministry. So undertake what he has given you to do. I know there's folk in the children's and youth ministries, people that are energised to use the gift that they've been given. It's After all, it's a gift, amen? As, as much as, I guess, there's some capacity that we can improve ourselves, but it's God's latent talent that he has given to you. It's, it's his, ultimately, that... And absolutely, that has the glory for any talent mm -hmm. or ability of our own. So reignite your faith today. Your love, your passion for the work of God, for His glory. In 1 Corinthians 16, 15, it talks of some, they'd addicted themselves to the ministry. Addicted themselves. That's strong words, isn't it? Don't get bitter, get busy. <coughs> ministry isn't always easy or pleasant. And people today, it's... A hard work that any of us, whenever you stand up in your workplace, amongst uh, colleagues and amongst family and friends, whatever we do for the Lord, there's a cost to it, isn't there? For every one of us, whether it's uh, whatever your work or calling is. I mean, for some it's praying. I know there's some that were telling me how there's some prayerful, prayerful people in this church. And we thank God for that. Whatever it is that God has given you to do, do it. Do it with all your might. And stop resisting the potter's hand. We can make the mistake of resisting God's hand. He's the potter. We are the clay. Let us resign to his prompting and obey that. Where's your <coughs> gift gone? Stir it up. Stir it up. Fan it into flame. The gift. And secondly, the glory. When we think of the things that we need to get fired up about, we want everything that we do to give glory to him. As it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, that whatsoever we do is to his glory. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. The glory of the Lord back in the Old Testament, the glory left. Ichabod was written over the church to the gathering time, the gathering place of God's people. The glory left, the Shekinah, the glory of God had departed. And people today, in many ways, the glory has gone. The glory has gone, the reverence has gone, that all that fear of God has gone in the churches of God by and large and in many circles and we can likewise be neglectful of that glory. We want God to be glorified as the ultimate and absolute, the glorious message, the word of God, for that to be prevalent and predominating and for the word to be glorified and have free course, uh, for the word to not be neglected but to be declared soundly and strongly. Not to be cheapened as some kind of cheap substitute counterfeit gospel. Not to be wavered. Not to be diluted. Not to be watered down. To make it more palatable. This is true. And people today, I know there's some folk that we're all, many folk are on different medications or something. You can't water down that medication. The doctor says it's so many milligrams or so many tablets. You can't muck around with that. And people today. You can't muck around with the Word of God. We need the unadulterated Word of God. We don't want the nearly inspired version, the NIV. Mm. We don't want any cheap subject. We want the full counsel of the Word of God. We want the Word of God in our hands that we can count on and rely upon. And it needs to be full strength. Mm. Full strength medicine. Amen? God's Word has the answer for our lives and it's truth. Truth is still truth whether you believe it or not. Mm. And it doesn't matter how many people don't believe it. Mm. Amen? It's, this is the truth. The Word of God. God's absolute truth. And the plain teaching of God's Word is part of the glory, isn't it? It's, it's that God will be glorified as He is front and centre and He is absolute in our midst. In His Word. We're hearing from God when we fellowship because we're hearing the Word of God mm. and we're reading it together. There's many scriptures. Um, Paul talks in Acts 20, for example, I, I'll touch on to save time the context here. In Acts 20, he's talking about serving the Lord with all humility of mind, talking about many tears, temptations or trials. He said, I kept nothing back that was profitable. He talks about going from house to house. He says, for I shall not to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He wanted to give the whole counsel of God. And 
That's why it's good to study the Old Testament through the Old and the New and to dig deep. Of course, the sun, as we know, it says rightly dividing the certain applications. Some are not uh, <coughs> directly applied to us, but we can learn from the truth of the types and the meanings that underlie the word. As, as we know, the, the new is in the old concealed and, and revealed in the new, God's word. And so God uses old-fashioned Bible preaching to bring revival. It says in the word of God that the righteous man, the blessed man, is going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So there's a grounding, there's a planting. We're stable and fed as we dig deep, as our roots extend into that, that fertile ground that is the word of God, as we're fed by it, as we're strengthened by it. Now just this week I went to Bunnings and on some shelves there they have the bonsai trees. If anyone's ever seen such things, it's a, a tree that's a miniature of the real thing. <coughs> and how does it get like that? I was reading how they put the tree as it's young in a pot and they cut the roots. They keep trimming the roots and changing the shape as they twist the branches and it forms a, a miniature of the full tree. They also reduce the nutrients that come into the bonsai tree. The roots are the secret to its size. It's because the roots are not deep and extended. And how's your roots as a Christian? Are you planted by the rivers of water? Are you planted by the word? Blessed is the man. Read Psalm 1. People today, we can be like a bonsai Christian. A bonsai Christian. You know, where we that could be strong and Vibrant and flourishing are just a miniature of what we could be. Mm. We're dwarfed, we're stunted because we're not reading the Word, we're not getting the Word. People today, it's important to get the Word, to not be um, like a bonsai tree, but to be grounded in God's truth and to get back to the old past, the old book, where the glory will come. The trouble is when we've lost our foundations, we've lost our moorings, we just like the world about us. We've lost our Bibles. We've lost the glory. The glory has departed. And it's like it says in Proverbs 22, Remove not the ancient landmark which the fathers have set. The ancient landmarks. We've gone away from the landmarks. It's like, I know the block here, they've got to do some more surveying. They've got to know how to put things. And this is how we know whether we line up. It's by the landmarks, isn't it? It's by the... The boundaries the, the, that God has mapped out for us, he's spelled out for us, he's clearly delineated for us what the truth is, where the right way is, where the truth is. And if we get away from the word, we get away from the glory. So we need the gift of God. Use those talents, those callings, those abilities, the glory of God, that the word will be central, we'll hear it and heed it, be planted in it, and God will be glorified as the word has free course and is glorified. And we need the gospel, people. We need the gospel. Judgment is coming across the land. Judgment is coming across the world community and our own nation. For it's sin. For it's sin. We know how things are going absolutely to a, a total mess uh, in the world today as we sing. Um, and it's been said that this is a cycle that's been seen over history in great nations, in great civilizations. Uh, it's been said that there's an average cycle of 200 years where each, each one of the nations goes through this sequence of, from spiritual faith to great courage, from great courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, and from dependency back to bondage. Mm. And people today, I believe our nation and the world at large in rejecting Christ and the gospel is headed for bondage. Mm. It's headed for destruction. No matter what the United Nations might do with all the so-called man-made climate change and all the machinations of world government trying to solve the world's problems and, and uh, play God, people today, this world, this world community is headed for destruction and judgment is coming for our nation, for our world at large. Masses are headed for eternal destruction. And I get fired up. I get fired up, don't you? Don't you get fired up to think there's a hell, there's a judgment to come, there's many lost and dying in our world. 
I get fired up, don't you? To impart the message, the gospel, while we can. When was the last time you gave out a gospel tract? When was the last time you cared enough to tell a soul of salvation, of the Saviour, of judgment to come, of a sin forgiven, of a life in heaven? When was the last time you cared to witness? Are you fired up? Are you fired up? Or is it just a Sunday Christianity that you just clock in and out of as it suits you? The reality of sin, of hell, of judgment to come. Have we lost the conviction? Have we lost the fire? The purpose that our Saviour had to seek to save the lost of salvation that is by grace plus nothing and minus nothing. That's His wonderful work yeah. that He would we want to give him the glory for. Are we giving him the glory when we don't open our mouths, when we don't pass it on? Don't keep it to yourself. Don't be selfish with the gospel. Get fired up. Get fired up with the Great Commission. It's great. And people today, just wrapping up the gift. You've got a gift. Use it. Whatever it is. A gift to pray. A gift of hospitality. A gift to care. A gift to write. To phone. To visit. To love. A gift. To speak, to care, to love, to minister to kids, children, youth, to witness. The gift, use it, get fired up about it. The glory, get fired up about the glory. We've lost it by and large because we got away from the word. Get back to that. The gospel, get back to that, get fired up by the gospel. And lastly, get fired up about the gathering, the gathering, the church. The church, the gathering together of the godly. We should get fired up about that. And I know you are, you're here today. And we can all have times when we can't make church. And as it were, the gathering, the assembling, the getting together. But how we need to be a church that's getting on with it. An old-fashioned Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. A church that pleases the Lord. Not geared to impress men. Not that everything's geared about making people feel, oh, that was... Uh, that gave me a buzz, I'll go there again. And we're not about giving you warm and fuzzies and scratching your back and itching your scratches, or <laughs> scratching your itches. But we're not about that today. We're not about that. You might get really cheesed off with some of the things that get on get happening here, especially when they're talking about sin and judgment <coughs> and hell and saying, wait, why don't you give out a track? Come on, get off your seat. People today... We need to be challenged. We need to be challenged. We need, and how can we be challenged? As we exhort one another. Mm. I can get challenged by you. Mm. As you exhort me. As we exhort one another. That's what we need. To be a church that faithfully preaches Christ in the here and in the beyond. In the regions beyond that cares about missions. That cares about souls in other lands. In our own streets. A church that takes a stand upon the doctrines of the word of God. So we won't mess about with new fad ideas that don't measure up. We won't have a bar of that. We're not going to mess with it. A church that stands without apology on the faith that was once delivered for the saints that we want to earnestly contend for. We're not an emergent church. It's one of the some of those things I'm, I'm still learning what they're all about because it's just I'm not not really interested. Mm -hmm. a, a seeker sensitive church, a postmodern church. We're not that. We're not a mega church. We're not a purpose driven church. We're not into that stuff. We just want the word. Mm. We want to exhort one another. We want to grow. We want to be biblical. And that's, that's not to say there's bits and pieces that might be good in other contexts. And that's not to say we can't be innovative and do things different. And that we've got a rigid formula that we're straight jacketed to. Or a certain tradition to follow. But we want to be following this. I mean, this is what we want to follow. This is what we want to be led by and that motivates everything we do. We don't have to be with it, whatever it is. We want to be with him, amen? Mm. Not to be hip and cool. I mean, maybe we will be sometimes. But we, we don't have to be any of that. Mm. We just want to be with our Saviour, amen? Mm. We want the glory to be his. Not preaching some kind of vague self-esteem kind of gospel that's really no gospel at all. To be biblical. Really, some of the hip names that come with some of, the old, uh, some of these new fat ideas, they're really old-fashioned damnable heresies because it's saying that a man can make himself and save himself by lifting up his own bootstraps and, and uh, 
there's many paths to God. There's all kinds of crazy ideas out there now. And it's, as I've said before, it's going really from beyond ecumenism to interfaith, where they're just saying, hey, we, we, don't, have, we don't have too much uh, differences with Muslims or Jews or what, what not. And yet they don't have the Saviour that we have. They don't have Christ. People today, we can't mess with that. So let's not fashion a God after our own invention, but let's get back to the biblical model. And I trust we will and are doing and will continue to do. That we're not here to be entertained or to have comedy or, or uh, to have some kind of show. I mean, there might be some humour now and again. You're allowed to smile now and again as a Christian. Amen. But we, we can be encouraged today. That's what matters, isn't it? That's what really counts. And that we can get fired up about the gathering, about the church of God. It's been said many are called and few are chosen. Someone said... Many are cold and a few are frozen. Mm. Let's not be like that, amen? We don't <coughs> be like that, do we? <laughs> we want to be on fire, don't we? Not mm. frozen. We, we need to thaw out a bit sometimes, amen? <coughs> we need to thaw out, not to be cold and frozen, but to be working for the Saviour, living the life. A solid church, a strong church, a Christ-honouring church. Not to, this is not a time to give ground, but to take ground. Mm. This is not a time to be closing down churches, but to be opening them up, to be planting them. Mm. And if God helps us to, we'd lo I'd love to see that happen. There's opportunity. There's plenty of region around us that is crying out. And uh, we're not confined to this place or this suburb. I I'd like to see our services extended as God helps us to, as God gives us the capacity to, that we can extend the kingdom of God. We're not in about retreat or some fatalistic, you know, wait for the rapture. We're here to occupy till he comes. Mm. Amen. And there's souls out there, if there's other Christ honouring Bible based churches that have got reverence, that have got dogmatic biblical preaching, we want to support that and extend that and see that happen and plant uh, God helping us to see other things extended. That we can be that church with a passion to grow, to glorify the Lord, to reach out. And that our church can be memorable, that it can be meaningful, that it can be heartfelt. A church that cares, a church that's real, that cares about fervent evangelism, it cares about personal holiness, it cares about people, about souls, about the community that's all about us, that we really care. We really care. It's not just lip service. And that we can get conviction when we come to church. We can get convicted about what we're not doing. Not that it's about doing. But we can get convicted about what, what would please our master mm. that we're neglecting. It's like the, the roof falling down, the, the dripping roof out of idleness of hands. It's about the building decaying because of slothfulness. People, don't be slothful as a Christian. There's no time for that. We've got no time to be slothful. It's not a time to be cold. It's a time to be on fire. On fire. Fight up. To get to that place on the launching pad where we have ignition. We have ignition. We have liftoff. That we can get fired up. In some churches, the problem is coldness. Coldness. And we're not talking about the air conditioning. We're talking about the soul. We're talking about the fervor, the love. The love has grown cold, as our Saviour said it could. And our first love, have we left it or should we refresh it? I'm conscious I'm talking long here, just closing now. A survey was done of a man by a man called Barnett. And he asked about churches. He asked, what do the unchurched uh, find that is the most significant factor in selecting a church? And he said, there's a number of things, theological beliefs and doctrines, the quality of the programs, the classes for children, how much the church is helping the poor, the quality of the sermons, uh, getting a personal invitation or recommendation from someone living uh, in the church that they know and trust, or how much the people in the church seem to care about each other. And it was the last one, the last one, how much the people in the church seem to care about each other, that was what really counted. And do we care about each other? It's love. It's love, people. It's love that we need, isn't it? A love for the, our Saviour, a love for the book, a love for the brethren. And I trust that we have that, that we're a down-to-earth bunch, that we're not putting on airs and graces and, and, you know, but we're connected. 
We're connected with his love. It's that cement that puts us together, isn't it? And how is our love? Our love today. How is your love today? Your passion. Are you on fire? Or has, it, has your first love kind of got behind some other loves and uh, reduced and grown cold? <coughs> People today, how can we be that loving kind of church? A church that loves, that and not a lovey-dovey, uh, warm and fuzzy, you know, anything goes kind of love, but a love that's based on the Word. We love the truth. We love souls because we love the Saviour who wants to save them. We love heaven because we want to be there with many as many as we can take along with us. And that's the love that we want to demonstrate and live. And in church history, there were some godly people that were called um, Puritans. Puritans. They were called that because of their strict regard for purity. Purity of doctrine. Purity of worship. Purity of daily life. Can we be like them? Can we follow in their tread to be Puritans? To be pure. A truly New <coughs> Testament church that loves the Word, is sensitive to sin, and reaches out and is fired up. Fired up. People, just to recap the gift. Have you let it grow dim? Have you let it just burn out, fizzle out, fan it into flame, stir it up today? The gift, the gospel, don't neglect it. Share it, don't keep it to yourself. Get out there and give it as God helps you to, however may, he may help you to do so. The glory, the word, the gathering place, the gathering of ourselves. Let's not neglect, let's not get apathetic or complacent. Let's do what God has called us to. And be encouraged today. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You're blessed today. Mm -hmm. You're blessed. It's, I heard someone say, just to just have a breath is a blessing, isn't it? Just the next breath we breathe is mm -hmm. a blessing. And you're blessed with all spiritual blessings. I know many come to me, and many have of late, uh, all burdened down, and, and sadly they're not here some that have, have spoken to me of this. I wanted to encourage